good buddy of mine, former police officer and the founder of the Tatum Report, Brandon Tatum, joining us. Brandon, how you doing, brother? I'm doing well. Obviously, some very, very sad news um, to report today coming out of Florida. And as I was saying right before you popped on there, so many people over the last several years, and now we know it's a fact, you know, the FBI, the higher echelon, those guys are in bed with different administrations and have done some corrupt stuff. Let's be real. But the field agents, the guys that are out there busting like this, a child porn ring, they're getting the work done. And so I think we have to pay tribute to them. Yeah, I think that any person that's uh, putting their life on the line for citizens and people who they don't even know are willing to die to protect uh, young children from being mm -hmm. exploited by these child pornography um, individuals. And and I think that, like you said, and I want to reiterate on it, I know we uh, criticize the leadership in some of these cases, and it's the same thing in law enforcement. Leadership sometimes are the corrupt, dangerous individuals, but the people that are boots on the ground doing the work every day are typically the ones who are, are there to do a job of service uh, with love and compassion. It's the same thing in our country. Some of our leadership at the top of our government are terrible, evil, dangerous individuals. But the people of the United States of America, like you and I, and many people who are watching, are genuine uh, people who love one another, or not rooted in racism, and all of the other things that, are, that have been said. So um, shout out to the FBI agents that are out there doing the work, and, and, and God bless this family that have lost uh, two uh, potentially wonderful people. Yeah, yep. Thank you, Brandon, for that. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> let's kind of pivot now into this, because the defund police movement is still out there. Uh, you've got members of the Biden administration who pushed for it, not just last year when all the riots were happening, but have been pushing it for over years. I want to bring up a tweet. So this comes, Brandon, uh, from a lady named Jelena Porter, who was just appointed the deputy spokesperson for the Secretary of State in the Biden administration. And read her tweet. The largest national security threat to the U.S. are police officers, a.k.a. the Blue Klux Clan, when will we the people know peace and security? Are you kidding me? Calling cops the Blue Klux Klan. Now, that was a few years ago. So this woman's obviously thought that for several years. It's not like she got fired up after the BLM and the Antifa riots last year. This has been in her mind for years. This is now a member of the staff of our Secretary of State. Yeah, not only is that the dumbest statement that I've ever heard in my lifetime, it's incredibly divisive. I mean, if anyone um, wants to be united, you're not going to unite on an anti-police rhetoric. That makes no sense. There is no correlation between law enforcement, especially not two years ago, and the Ku Klux Klan. One being the diversity that's on police departments all over the country. Police officers aren't just white. There's people of all nationalities, all racial backgrounds, and all economic backgrounds who join the force with a mission to support the community. And I promise you, I can bet you here on national TV, I will probably give my last check to anybody who can disprove me that most of these people who hate the police never served on the police department and are too much of a coward to ever put their life on the line and be selfless enough to do the job that many of these people in law enforcement do. So what an incredibly evil thing to say about law enforcement officer, an ignorant thing to say, and a divisive thing to say. Brandon, I see that you've uh, collaborated with our friends over at PragerU. We love Dennis Prager. Um, and there's a video that you just put out uh, talking about, I think, white privilege and racism, because everything with this administration now is about racism. I heard his uh, climate control czar the other day say that climate control and getting control of it is about racism. She really tied racism to climate control. So I want to roll this video in its entirety, because you know I like doing that here. I don't like little clips of stuff. I like my viewers to get the whole picture. Set this video up, because I thought it was so well done in a few minutes, and it really tells a complete story about this narrative being pushed of white privilege and racism. So, so set it up for me, the video that you put together. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was anticipating watching the <laughs> video okay. with you. So it's right. no, no it was, it's a video that I made because it's been something that's been really heavy on my heart about this white privilege myth and my personal opinion. Are there white people who are privileged? Yeah, there's black people who are privileged. That's irrelevant. The point is that they are driving a wedge between Americans and they're actually being prejudiced against white people by pushing this white privilege. So I made a video just articulating my thoughts with evidence and proof why white privilege is, is simply a, a, a fake theology that's used to, to uh, victimize black people and push division and hatred. People. I'd like to ask you a favor. 
please stop asking for forgiveness for your white privilege. You're not fooling anybody. You're not helping black people or any other minority. And your public confessions don't make you look virtuous. They make you look disingenuous, which is a really nice way of saying fake, phony, and fraudulent. For starters, what is white privilege anyway? Because you're born with white skin, you have all these advantages that I don't have? Like what? Like you can get a mortgage loan that I can't get? Hmm, I got a loan. At a great rate, by the way. And I got the house. Why would a banker not give a loan to someone who met the loan requirements? He doesn't want to make money? I've never heard of such a banker. Or how about this? You can enter a store and not be looked upon with suspicion, but I, a black person, cannot? Except that has never happened to me. But if I was a young dude with my pants hanging down to my butt, I could understand why the store owner would be concerned. I used to be a cop. Believe me, I understand. If I owned the store, I'd be tracking that kid too, whether he was black, white, or anything else. Or what if I had a store that had a history of being shoplifted by young black women and a young black woman with a bad attitude walked in? Would I be suspicious? Yeah, I would. Who wouldn't? I call that common sense, not bigotry. But there's another way of looking at this. In many ways, in today's America, blacks have more privilege than whites. It's been my experience that whites bent over backwards to give blacks every possible advantage. If two people are equally qualified for a job, the black person will usually get it. Big companies and prestigious universities fall all over one another trying to sign up talented black people. If you deny this, you are denying reality, which is what the person who dreamed up this whole thing did. A professor of women's studies at Wellesley College by the name of Peggy McIntosh. She wrote in an article in 1988 about all the white privilege she thought she had. She listed 46, including this one. I can choose bandages and flesh color and have them more or less match my skin. Wow, that's some kind of privilege. Soon others took up the cause. Today, these so-called progressives dominate our colleges and universities, imposing this absurd notion of white privilege on their students. That's too bad because it does nothing good for white students, and it does nothing good for black students. But of the two, ironically, the white students get the better of the deal. Let me explain. To acknowledge your white privilege is supposed to make you feel bad, only it doesn't. It makes you feel good because by acknowledging your white privilege, you're declaring yourself to be enlightened. And as a virtue bonus, it also makes you a better person than those whites who don't acknowledge their privilege. White privilege, which is supposed to make you feel bad, ends up making you feel good. Meanwhile, the real damage is to blacks. What makes whites feel good makes blacks angry. More than 50 years after the civil rights movement, the message is, you're still oppressed. How can this not create a victim mentality? And anyone of any color who sees himself as a victim gets angry. Mm. Now, I wouldn't deny for a second that there are privileges in life. They're all over the place. There's two-parent family privilege. That's huge. There's being lucky to be born in America privilege. There's good gene privilege. But white privilege? Doesn't it depend on the person? Let's take this for example. A black lawyer and his wife have a baby, and a meth addict, single white woman, has a baby. Which kid has privilege? The white one? Because he's white? Come on now. And here's the kicker. Even if it were true, all those claims about white privilege, so what? Would it change a single thing I did? If white people apologize for being white, is that supposed to help me? In what way? So let's be real. White privilege is an attempt by the left to divide Americans by race. It's all theory and all nonsense. Brandon Tatum, wow, what a message you sent in that video. If folks want to see uh, articles that you write, videos that you do, tell them how they can see it, man. You are, you're just such a strong voice for the conservative movement and for the black community, for all Americans, man. I love what you're doing. Fill them in. Yeah, all glory be to God, man. I thank God for giving me this opportunity. So the Officer Tatum, the Officer Tatum, 
theofficertruth.com. Go on there. You'll see all of my platforms, my news outlet, everything that I have at theofficertatum.com. Brandon Tatum from the Tatum Report. God bless you for what you're doing, brother. You take care and be safe. Thank you, brother.